Hello and welcome to lecture 69 from my class from data to decisions. In this lecture we're going to use R to do a little analysis of covariance. If you saw the previous uh, lectures you should already know what that means. If not I'll review what that means for you here. So I, I took this example from a uh, very nice R bloggers uh, blog and uh, many thanks to the author uh, of this example. Uh, we start with the orange data frame that is already in R, so you don't have to do anything to load it. It's already there, so I'm just going to copy it into orange.dia data frame. Let's look at the data. It's always a good idea to begin every uh, regression and analysis by looking at the data. So what do we have? Well, we've got 35 observations. We have three variables. The variables are tree, age, and circumference. The age the age of the tree, passing in days, and uh, these are orange trees. And circumference is the circumference of the tree itself as it's growing. And there are five trees, one, two, three, four, five. So we've, we've measured five different trees and watched how they've changed over time. Okay. What we'd like to do is build a model for how the circumference of our orange trees is growing with time. To begin with, though, I need to go over here to this tree variable, which is a set of numbers, one, two, three, and I need to convert it to a factor because it, the numbers don't mean anything. They're just, it could have been A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to use this uh, factor command that will take the tree variable and, and replace it as a factor. All right? Now, if I go and look, uh, I'm not going to see much of anything, uh, although. Uh, it seems to have rearranged what it calls 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, but nonetheless, they look like numbers. But they're not. They're factors. You can always check it. If you're not sure, you can do is.factor and then give it the variable. And it will tell you whether it's a factor or not. And true, it says it is. Before, it would have said false. All right. We've looked at the data. Now we're going to plot it. So let's plot it up. I'm just plotting circumference versus age. And, uh, well, it looks like kind of a linear trend going up. Uh, there's spread, and it certainly looks like the spread is growing. So my first thought is, oh, we have a maybe a linear trend here, but um, probably some heteroscedasticity. At least that's what you would think. But there's going to be something else going on that we'll discover in a moment. Um, and, and it has to do with this, this um, nuisance variable tree. We're not trying to measure or understand or model the difference between trees. What we're trying to understand and model is the rate at which a tree grows. So we can consider the tree itself as a nuisance variable. So if we ignore that, think of a randomization, so to speak, we just randomly picked five trees, we can model circumference versus age. All right, so let's do that. Our first model will be LM circumference as a function of age, and we'll look at a summary of that model. We see that we have a an intercept of 17, a slope of 0.1, uh, they're, they're significant, and we have an R squared of uh, 0.83. But the idea behind analysis of covariance is that we take a covariate, a, a nuisance variable, a variable that we know, we know which tree measurements came from, and we include it in the model. If it's a linear model, assume that the intercept varies from tree to tree, or we can assume that the slope varies from tree to tree, or of course we can assume both intercept and slope could be varying from tree to tree. Let's begin with the simplest. We'll assume that there's a separate intercept for each of the five trees, and we do that by adding tree as a variable. Because we've set tree as a factor, when we include tree as a variable, 
it will dumbify. LM will dumbify that variable. It will turn it into a set of indicator variables. If there's five trees, it will need four indicator variables to uh, model. And it will do that automatically. So we don't have to do anything other than say plus tree in our regression equation. So let's do that. We run the model and we uh, look at the results in our summary. It says the intercept, the age, uh, hasn't changed much. And now we have an offset of the intercept by tree, right? So before the intercept was 17, now the intercept for uh, the first tree is minus 4.4. And then different trees have different intercepts, tree 2, tree 3, 4, added on to that original intercept. Um, tree 2, not significant in the sense that it could have been 0, but all the other ones certainly are. Now, our R squared is 0.94, so it went up quite a bit. There's a big difference. And look at how much these intercepts are varying from minus 4 to 45. All right, let's go back and look at our data on the graph. The intercept is going down here to 0, and wow, is, are they really varying? Uh, you know, all these data look like they're almost on top of each other at the very short age, and yet our model is saying the intercepts are varying dramatically. How much did it say? Uh, between minus 4 and 45. So 45 is all the way up here. So intercepts 45 out here. Really? That, that, that seems strange. It seems very strange. Maybe the effect of the tree is not to change the intercept, it's to change the slope. Right? Well, first of all, before we do that, let's let's run the ANOVA test, the, the um, partial F test, and ask if this, the superset model is significantly different from the subset model. So I'll run ANOVA on the two models, and I see that the p-value is quite small. So there is a significant difference. We kind of notice that with the r squared is much higher. Uh, so we are getting a different model that is statistically significant. That doesn't mean we have the right model, right? even though we have a higher R squared. Let's look at the possibility. What's really varying is the slope of these uh, pre-age behaviors. So to, to do that, I'll take circumference versus age plus tree plus the interaction of age and tree. Tree is an indicator variable, remember? So by including tree, I'm, I'm changing the intercept, tree by tree by tree, but the slope has to be the same slope for all of them. By including the interaction term, it says I can have a different slope for every tree. And the, the, the coefficient of the interaction term will tell me how much the slope is changing from tree to tree. All right, we run that model and look at our summary of the data. First of all, I get 0.976 for the R squared. It's definitely a uh, better R squared. Let's look at our coefficients. We have tree, two, three, four, and five. And then age tree, those are the interaction terms. That's telling us how much the slope is changing from tree to tree. Well, look at what has happened. The significance of the pre variable has gone to zero, right? We got 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.9, 0 0.7 for the p values of all of these different intercepts. In other words, in fact, the intercept does not vary from tree to tree. It's all about the same. It's all about, uh, you know, 19 or 20 or something. Then, we look at the change in the slope from tree to tree, and we see that, well, for tree two, it's not significantly different than tree one. But for tree three, it is, barely, and four a lot, and five really a lot. So uh, different trees are behaving differently. Right? 
if I go back here and look, I can now begin to understand that one of the trees is, is kind of the bottom sets of data points, tree one, and tree five is higher sets of data points, and it's growing at a faster rate. We'll plot that a little bit differently in a moment. To do the plotting, I'm going to take advantage of another package, the, the lattice package that has some interesting plots um, called panel plots. So let's load up the lattice package. If you've, if you've never installed it, you'll need to install it. I've installed it before, so I can comment that line out and load it. So I've loaded this, and now I, I have a function called xyplot that I can put different panels. I won't go through all the details of, of how that works. You can look that up at yourself, but I'm basically plotting circumference versus age for different trees. So that's the indicator variable. And when I run it, I will get a series of panels. So here are my panels, and it automatically fits a, a, a line through each of them. The scales are all the same. So it's going the same range for every one of these plots. So it's very comparable. Um, and sure enough, some of these plots have a much lower slope. One, two, three. And then the slope's getting bigger, four, and five has the biggest slope. The intercepts are all here the same, right? So this intercept is, is lower, this one's higher, but they're, they're not changing very much. The slopes are changing quite a bit. And that's the real difference. The real thing we're observing here is a change in the rate of growth from one tree to the next. Uh, we can also plot the residuals in the same way. If I look at a plot of the residuals, uh, I see it does not look at all like heteroscedasticity. It's simply a normal spread of residuals about zero for each individual tree. Finally, we could do an ANOVA test uh, comparing uh, only having tree, only having intercepts varying from tree to tree to having slopes varying from tree to tree. And if I compare those two models, I see that the, uh, the difference in the models is statistically significant. Uh, I could also compare it to the original model one, and I see that is also statistically significant, as you would expect. So here is a way of dealing with a nuisance variable um, by including an indicator variable. Uh, in this case, which tree it was measuring, and just simply including it in the regression. Uh, well, that's this example. There's a lot more on the design of experiments still to come. Thanks.